So with that, I'm pleased to introduce our first speakers. Chuck Nicholson is an Associate Professor of Agricultural and Applied Economics at UW-Madison, whose position is funded by the Dairy Innovation Hub. Chuck is joined by Kevin Bernhardt, a Professor of Agribusiness here at UW-Platteville and UW-Extension Farm Management Specialist. Chuck and Kevin are going to talk about their work on a special project related to the cost of dairy production in Wisconsin. Please welcome these presenters. Okay, good morning. Thank you for being here. It's a great pleasure to be here with uh, Kevin. And I think this project illustrates some of the best things about what the Hub has allowed us to do, in part because the idea for the project was initiated by conversations with a Wisconsin dairy farmer. Uh, it involves the collaboration of all three of the UW campuses associated with the Hub. Uh, and it addresses a fairly practical problem that should be of interest. So we started out uh, with this question about the patterns of cost of production and what determines it. And one of the things that struck us was looking across some years of data here, we have an extremely wide range of costs of production. And that in and of itself should be a little bit curious because what is driving a difference uh, that almost gets up to about $20 per hundredweight from one farm to another in the same year, and we see that pattern consistently across the five years we're looking at. So this very large range was something that got us uh, a bit interested about why is that and what might we do to make that range a bit less narrow. So we started out with some listening sessions uh, with farm groups to get input on a project. Our goals are to evaluate some different sources of information on cost of production that we'll talk more about in a moment, document those specifically within the state of Wisconsin and think about things by size and production system, think about the importance of cost of production to both the pricing and profitability of dairy farms, and we also have the goal of raising awareness of the need to continue to collect the kind of data that allowed us to do this analysis through uh, an initiative called Farm Bench. Okay? And we have some concluding uh, educational webinars and podcasts, including one tomorrow on Dairy Signal that we'll both be uh, sharing additional information on. So we have some important questions we want to try and understand, the role of pricing and profitability, or production and profitability, what causes those large differences that we showed you just a minute ago. And an interesting question, particularly for me, I'll talk about later, is it always the same farms that are in the lower part of that spectrum of costs and in the higher part of that spectrum of costs? Are they different? What's the relative importance of cost of production in uh, profitability metrics? And can we identify management strategies that will lower that cost of production? Okay. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the guy who really knows. Kevin is going to tell you more about his part of this. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. Well, uh, first of all, putting two professors behind a microphone with an audience and telling them that they can speak for five minutes each is really difficult. <laughs> but I'll give it a try. First of all, let me uh, just mention the data that we are working with is 174 farms, Wisconsin farms. In the years 2014 to 2018, five years there, uh, now if you recall back to that time, profitability was great for one of those years, 2014, and lousy for the next four. So that reflects itself in the data as well. Uh, the other thing to remember is profits are not made by cost of production. Profits are made by the difference between revenue and cost of production. And that's going to come out loud and clear here as well. We did several studies, uh, uh, still doing them. Some of those are cost of production by cow, cost of production by hundredweight, grouping all the farms on a five-year average by cost of production, and then looking at profit itself based on return on assets and doing the same thing. So grouping farms by return on assets based on a five-year average. Chuck will be doing it more on individual years. Uh, and a few other types of sorts, sorting by herd size and a few other metrics that I'll mention at the very end here. Uh, so getting to the PowerPoint, this is just a glimpse of a few of the things. Uh, this is based on median especially for price, um, looking at average, it can get quite distorted when you look at different types of farms, but the median may be a little bit more reflective. This is by herd size. All these slides here happen to be by herd size. The green line is the uh, 
average of the top third of farms by profitability uh, with respect to, um, uh, this is what their price is. So that top third of farms had a 1735 price, for example, for the one to 99 herd size. And that's about, a, let's see, let me advance this up. That's about a 21 cent difference. The other herd size is there, 11 cents, 73 cents. And actually for the largest farms, it flipped the other way just a bit when you look at it by the median. So price is part of profitability. Uh, production is a part of profitability. So here's the differences there. This is pounds per cow per year. So put the decimal point over two spots for 100 weight. Uh, so 1,700 weights, 11, 28, 25 per cow difference in production as you look at the difference between the top third most profitable and the lowest third most profitable for each of those herd size groups. This is where it gets kind of interesting. Look at the left side first. Try to ignore that right side if you can. And initially looking at cost of production per cow. And I first looked at that and I'm going, wait a minute, what's going on here? Uh, that cost of production is increasing with herd size, first of all. And if I look at just profit groups only, not herd size, I don't have that graph here, but if I was looking at only profit groups, lowest third, middle third, and highest profit group, the cost per cow increases. And I'm going, wait a minute, how can that be? And then uh, dummy me here realized that cost of production per hundredweight includes production. So you saw what the production was. That's going up. Cost of production per cow, so now look at the right side and you see what, what happens when you put the two together. So there's a lot of interactions here. You know, there's always that good battle between the economics department and the dairy and animal science department. What's more important, increasing production or lowering costs? And I think the answer is both, right? We have to be a part of that, or what is the relative difference between the two? Some uh, last slide I have here is just kind of getting a feeling for what is the source of profitability coming from. Is it coming from price? Is it coming from cost of production per cow being lower? Is it coming from production being higher? In terms of herd size, those lowest groups, they're doing it through cost of production being lower. In terms of the higher herd size groups, they're doing it for production being higher. Uh, and finally, just to kind of wrap up my part of it here a little bit, uh, there is, a, I think you do have one more here, don't I? Yeah, there it is. Um, looking at profit groups by themselves, not herd size now, just profit groups, lowest third, middle third, high third. The thing that we're seeing very prevalent is that to get from the low third profit group to the middle, you have to cut costs. So you're cutting costs per cow, you have a lot of inefficiencies out there, and you're managing yourself to greater efficiency in that input use. But if you want to get to the high third group, if you want to be that top performing dairy operation, like some of those we saw just this morning, there's a little bit different tact. Spend money to make money. So that group is spending money in order to be able to get relatively higher production and in the end, higher profits. Up to you. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, thanks, Kevin. I think one of the important lessons that we've learned, at least I've learned through this, is that it's good to focus on that idea of cost of production. But as Kevin said, the spending money to make money is an important component of this as well, particularly for some of those farm groups that you just mentioned. So I want to do fairly briefly, one of the things we've also been doing, looking through the data, is to try and understand basic patterns that we see with regard to the cost of production side of the equation. I'm not going to belabor these right now, but basically what we're seeing is uh, larger herd sizes, uh, more milk, uh, have generally the impact of lowering the average cost of production, in this case per hundredweight, uh, having more farm assets, and then also the milk price, uh, surprisingly enough, maybe to many, are associated with higher costs of production. And that milk price idea perhaps, again, relates to the spend money to make money. you got a good price here, you can afford to feed the cows a bit more, and so you might see higher cost of production, but they may be a wise strategy. Okay? 
So I also mentioned uh, earlier on one of the questions about are the farms that are in the lowest cost of production categories and the highest cost of production categories always the same? That is, if you look at this graph, are they always sort of swimming within their same lane up at the top or up at the bottom? And so that's one possibility that we looked at. And another is that there's a great deal of variation over time. The farms tend to bounce around. They have a good year one year. They have a not so good year the next year in terms of cost of production. And actually what we found was that there's a great deal of variability. It's really hard or it seems really hard to be either in the lowest cost of production category consistently or for that matter in the highest cost of production category consistently. And this graph actually shows the trajectories for three farms that fall into those different categories. I noticed here that my green always highest should be modified when we post these to be always lowest. But you can see there are farms that consistently achieve that. Uh, there are farms that consistently have uh, that higher average cost of production. Uh, and then there are those that vary quite a lot. And these are just examples uh, of how these patterns look. So one of the things that we will do going forward is try and better understand why do we see those different patterns and why is it so hard to be consistently in one of those categories. One of the things that we do see associated with greater variability in cost tends to be farm size. Uh, partly that's a function of the data that we have available to us, uh, but there seems to be a relationship between having uh, a larger herd size and having less variability over time in those uh, cost of production values. Okay. So I have like about a minute. Uh, we had listening to sessions uh, last year. We've been doing data analysis on some different types of information that we'll share in a complete report by the end of the year. Uh, we're actually working on accessing data for 2019 to 2021 because we know 2018 is now kind of ancient history. It's even pre-pandemic. Uh, it's one of our main goals is to demonstrate the usefulness of this information. We've got uh, a webinar that we did back in May and another that we have uh, tomorrow. So our ultimate goal is to try and contribute to decision making on farms and also to continue to have access to relevant data that helps us evaluate uh, farm performance. So. I'll hand it back over to Kevin in case he has anything else you'd like to add to that. Nope. I see we're getting the, the big red sign there, so I believe okay. we're done. All right. Let's thank, oh, sorry. Let's thank Chuck and Kevin.